It's past midnight when the 17-year-old Lisa McVeigh finally gets off work. She gets on her bike and enjoys the fresh night breeze minutes before falling into the serial killer Bobby Joe Long nightmare realm. Lisa McVeigh's story is simultaneously a testament to human strength and her will to survive. Her courage to stand up against her tormentor and eventually go to the police contributes to the apprehension of the murderer. The way home is different today for Lisa McVeigh. Everything else is different today because Lisa doesn't know this will be her last ride before getting kidnapped. Lisa is torn from her thoughts when suddenly a strong arm of at the back, he grabs and pulls her off her bicycle. Be quiet, or I'll shoot, says a male voice of her kidnapper as a cold weapon is pressed against her temple. Lisa McVeigh was born in March 1967, with her twin sister in Tampa, Florida. Unfortunately, the children didn't have a good start in life. Their father wasn't there for the family, and the mother was heavily addicted to drugs and alcohol, making it impossible for her to take care of her daughters. The children were placed in foster care at the age of two various facilities for the next five years. When Lisa was seven years old, she was taken in by her mother again. Whether her sister was also there at that time or whether she stayed in the foster home is unknown. A drug-dependent mother and sometimes left her daughters alone at home for months. When Lisa was 13 years old suddenly her grandmother reached forward and offered her granddaughter to stay with her and her life partner. Now you might think that Lisa has finally found a sheltered home, but unfortunately, Lisa's hell has only now started. So he starts to abuse and rape her. During this he holds a gun to her head and threatens to pull the trigger. If she resists he also threatens her that he will hurt her sister if Lisa tells someone about the abuse. What Grandma Lisa confided in her was that she had allegedly been accused of lying. Grandma said she should be grateful that she had a roof over her head at all. On November 2, 1984, 17-year-old Lisa, now 17 years old, drove to her shift at the Krispy Kreme donut shop at 4.20 a.m. On this day, she was scheduled to work a double shift, something she does frequently. She always wants to spend as much time as possible in the store, simply to avoid going home. On this particular day, Lisa decided that she had had enough. She no longer wants to continue living like this. She has lost all hope, with no one to support her and help her escape from this hell. Therefore, she decides to end everything on this night. When her shift ends, a colleague offers to drive the teenager home, but Lisa declines. She loves riding her bike and wants to enjoy this last ride to the fullest. The girl is now on her way home when she notices a strange car parked in front of a church at 507. She passes by this church every day and has never seen a car in front of it, especially not such a conspicuous one. Completely lost in thought, Lisa is suddenly pulled off her bike from behind at 5, 18 a.m. The girl screams for help and kicks and punches in self-defense. But then, suddenly, she sees a weapon and a male voice threatening to shoot her. She knows that, for now, there's nothing she can do but comply. However, one thing becomes clear to her at this moment, at 5.44 m. She wants to live. If she survives this, she will find a way to escape from all this mess at home. Later, Bobby Joe Long would describe Lisa as different. Lisa relied on her memory and her ability to observe specific details. She noted what she could see under her blindfold, identified the car type and the color of the interior, tallied the steps leading to his apartment, memorized how his face felt, determined his dominant hand, and observed his extreme cleanliness. He insisted she showers once inside his apartment. Moreover, as part of her manipulation tactic, she sought to empathize with him by suggesting he wasn't inherently bad, expressing that she saw goodness in him, and even offered to be his secret girlfriend. She recalls saying, Listen, you seem like a nice guy. After everything I've been through, we can be together. I could be your girlfriend. No one has to know how we met. Upon arrival at his house, what followed then was hours of rape and abuse. When she successfully managed to persuade him to allow her to use the bathroom, she purposefully touched every surface within reach, leaving fingerprints behind. The following morning, Lisa continued to employ her strategy of reverse psychology in an attempt to convince Long to spare her life. While always getting most of her terrifying time there she tried most to observe every detail she came into, white, short hair, short mustache, and a defined jawline. 
Bobby Long informed her that he couldn't keep her. He asked about her residence and assured her he would drop her off after making a stop at the bank and the gas station. While at the bank, Lisa managed to observe more details about Bobby. He was wearing a white t-shirt and had a physique that was not overweight but well-built. At the gas station, Long warned Lisa that any escape attempt would result in harm to both her and the gas station attendant. Following these stops, he drove her to another location, escorted her out of the car, led her to a tree, and instructed her to wait for five minutes while he drove away. When Lisa removed her blindfold and attempted to check his license plate number, she discovered Bobby had already vanished. The harrowing ordeal had lasted for 26 hours. The girl frantically pounds on the door until her grandmother's friend opens it. Instead of being relieved that Lisa is back home and seemingly unharmed, he accuses her of running away and leaving him. Even the grandmother doesn't believe Lisa's story. She calls the police and informs the investigators that the search can be called off because her granddaughter is back. She mentions visiting the police station on four occasions. The first time, no one believed me. The second time, no one believed me. Finally, an officer named Larry Pinkerton spoke to her and assured her that he believed her. She worked with the FBI for 12 days and the FBI collaborates with local law enforcement to solve the crimes. The pressure on Bobby increases, and he becomes the focus of investigators. Eventually, he was arrested in April 1985. At the time of his arrest, another shocking discovery is made. Personal belongings of the victims, including jewelry and clothing, are found in the trunk of his car. Forensic evidence, including the red nylon thread, unquestionably links him to the crimes. In the trial, Bobby Joe Long is charged and convicted for his heinous acts. Lisa McVeigh chose to attend Long's execution, sitting in the front row alongside Pinkerton and the detectives responsible for Long's arrest. Despite being present, McVeigh clarifies that her tears were not a result of finding closure. She expresses, I had closure a long time ago. She mentions, I forgave him a long time ago for what he did to me I was crying for the victims and the victim's parents who wouldn't be there. In 2019, he confessed to the 10 murders and was sentenced to death for the murder of Michelle Sims and died by lethal injection. Later on, Lisa managed to continue with her life even after her abduction. Lisa McVeigh is currently working as a police officer at Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office. She has served as a school resource deputy since 2013, working in schools within Hillsborough County. McVeigh worked on a Netflix documentary about her kidnapping and made a personal appearance after the Lifetime movie Believe Me inspired by her life. Having spent four days on set during production, she had the opportunity to meet Katie Douglas, the actress portraying her in the film, as well as Rossif Sutherland, who takes on the role of Long. It's to show people how to embrace life after horrific things happen to you, McVeigh says. What are your thoughts on this story? Do you think Bobby Long took the wrong victim or was it just pure luck for Lisa McVeigh? Please let us know in the comments. Thank you for listening, and don't forget to follow for more crime stories.